I mean, I am Brendan. We're selling bread. It's a good profit. It's a good level of profit on the bread. Let me take a little look-see here. Uh, what price should I set on the bread? Average cost is 99 cents. Market price is 396. So we want to we want to undercut our competition, right? So $50. No, not $50 bread. No, no, no. That'd be ridiculous. That'd be ridiculous. That'd be ridiculous. 350 bread. 350 bread? All right, we're good. Let's open up the store. 350 bread. We sold a butt. We sold some bread. Go to my store. Buy my Hey, where the f did that guy come from? What the f I was like, come to my store, buy my bread. Is there like a gala? What the f did you- 40, you brought 50 dot, you f piece of I'm giving you the 50 cents and pennies. No, absolutely, we're not doing this today, but we're not doing this. We're not doing this, this this whole like, ooh, 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 ooh. But what if, but what if I give you, but what if $50 for a loaf of bread? Oh, she's going to buy a lot of bread. I can feel it. A whole loaf. Nice. Hi there. Guard, huh? Nice. 350 for a little bit of that, ma'am. Awesome. We're already doing great. Would you like to buy my bread? Ma'am. Hello. You look like a customer who needs some bread. Would you like to come in and buy some bread? Come in. Yes. It works. It works. It works. White woman buying bread. It works. Finally. We're doing the Wonder Bread experience. White woman buying bread. We're finally living through the Wonder Bread experience. A white woman is buying bread. Where's the deforestation? Where is it at? Where are the trees? A white woman comes into my store and she buys bread. Yes. Yes. More white women. More bread. You gotta wonder, chat, about the bread. More. More will come to my store, and they'll keep buying bread at a reasonable price. They'll look at the loaf of bread and say, this is a reasonable price for a loaf of bread. Look at them. They're coming in. They're coming in. They're coming in droves. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Uh, 650 is your change. Give me a moment to count your, uh, here's a 50 cent piece for you. That's real, right? People still use those. Hi, how's it going? Credit card buying bread today, huh? Pretty cool. Pretty nice day outside, isn't it? Enjoy. More white women and more bread. More white women and more bread. This man is coming for some bread. He doesn't even know. He has no fucking idea. No idea. No idea what he's coming into my store for. No fucking clue. Nice day for bread, isn't it, sir? Great day for bread, huh? Well, uh, you know what they say. It's a great day for bread. Making a sandwich at home, huh? Gonna get some capicola. Gonna put some gabagool on there. That's, uh, capicola again. You're gonna put some ham on there. You're gonna put some pepperoni. I gotta follow this guy. You're gonna put some pepperoni slices on this sandwich, huh? You're gonna think... That looks like a penis. You think about, uh, you think about maybe putting a little ham, maybe a little roast beef, maybe a little tomato, maybe a little lettuce, maybe a little, uh, other kind of vegetable, maybe a little onion. I don't know. I don't know. What are you thinking about? What are you making at home, huh? You making a PB&J, huh? You making a fat slapper, huh? He's gone. I got a customer. I got I to gotta be wary of the store. They got guys coming in. Hello. Would you like to buy some bread? Awesome. I love selling bread to people. Uh, have a great day. Enjoy your bread. Hi. Oh, Jesus. All right. Cash money, huh? 50 fucking dollars. You're an insane person. You came in here to get change. That's why. You came in here to break change. You piece of shit. Bread, huh? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Enjoy your fucking day. I hope you have a way. It's a beautiful day outside, by the way. Beautiful. Beautiful day outside. I'm not gonna lie. Fucking gorgeous weather we're having. Have a great day. Coming to my bread store. Coming to buy some bread. Come and clear your head and buy some bread. News is, uh, ringing around through the town. The town crier is, uh, ringing his big bell. There's bread here. There's bread afoot. People are screaming. They're crying. They're shitting. They're farting. There's bread out here. Hi, little card, huh? I see. 3.50. Nice. Have a great day, sir. Oh, two loaves. Well, well, well. Somebody's stocking up on that fat stack, huh? Huh? Pretty cool. Have a great day. A white woman buying bread? Oh, hey. could it be? Bread for thee? Every day with this bread? Every day. It's nice to see the gates of hell opening immediately as soon as you realize you can sell bread. Hello, sir. Do you have a rewards card with us? Now, before I take this, do you have a rewards card with us? Now, I gotta ask you, I gotta ask you, before I take this card, before I take your credit card, have you thought about getting the supermarket bread credit card? No? All right, that's cool. That's fine. I'm not worried about it. Let me just help you out with your day here. Hi, right, two loaves of bread. Hey, as a bread connoisseur, I gotta ask you, do you have bread rewards with us? You get an extra slice thrown in every bag of bread if you get bread rewards. No? All right, that's fine. Get your bread card here. Come to my bread store and get your bread card. Holy shit, is that Sid from Toy Story, but all fucked up and crazy? He's in here for bread. Don't you dare steal bread, mister. 
I'm watching you. You better pay for your bread. I shouldn't have judged. Judge not lest you be judged. Thank you for the cash, sir. He's just a bread connoisseur. A lot of bread connoisseurs. Hey, remember to check out my website, breadit.com. Remember, if you're buying bread, you can always go to the website, breadit.com. Our slice, our loaf. Check out all my subreddits. No, I don't think they want to check out any of my subreddits. We got a pumpernickel subreddit. We got a, we got a wheat and whole grain subreddit. Pretty cool. I, it's really, I forgot about the lights. This is the darkened, how do I turn the lights on? There, there we go. This is like, I, I was genuinely afraid of like the darkened interior of my pooper market. Afraid, fear. You walk into the dark supermarket, there's nothing here, there's nothing here, there's nothing here. It's a wonder how these bread prices are so cheap. Turn the lights off. You shop in darkness now. Hi. How's it going? Bread, huh? That's great, dude. I love selling people bread in the dark. Yeah. I have a migraine, so, uh, three loaves! We got a three loaf for here. First time for everything. Well, well, well. Uh, love to see a three loafer. I love to shop in the dark. It's the only way to shop. Another Is this another three loafer? Holy shit. Chat, we're getting three loafers here. Uh, insane, actually. The nightly, sh the nightly shopping of the three loafers. Who needs three loaves of bread? I don't know. Loaf lovers? Loaf lovers anonymous? I don't have you. Do you know? Do you know somebody who loves a loaf? Do you know a loaf lover? You may have a loaf lover in your home and you don't even know. Some people just want three loaves of bread. I don't understand it personally. I don't get it. But some people, they're loaf lovers. They love to loaf. Not only do they loaf around, they love a loaf of bread. Who am I to judge? Who am I to judge a loaf lover? Right? Laboriously loving all the loaves of bread. Loaf lovers uh, unite. Loaf lovers love. Loaf lovers are filled with light. Who loves to loaf? Uh, the loaf lovers do. Don't judge, lest ye be judged. Do you want to be judged? I don't want to be judged. Personally, by the fires of perdition, they will not touch me. I don't want to be judged. But a loaf lover loves. Are you a loaf hater or a loaf lover? You gotta tell me. That's the law. Live, laugh, loaf. Getting a slutty back tattoo that says just as much. We're carbo-loading. We're carbo-loafing. Honestly and earnestly, we're getting real, real loaf friend hours out here, ain't we? Fully stocked with bread. Fully, for a reasonable price. White bread for a reasonable price. Insane. Undercut the competition for $4. Drive that customer to the brink. Ready for a brand new day? Ready for a brand new day? Come to my store. Buy my oil and my bread. Come to my store, buy my oil and my bread. What a beautiful day. And live, laugh, loaf. That's, it, honestly, that's a really good name for a store. If I was able to name the store, we're naming it Live, Laugh, Loaf. Live, laugh, loaf. <laughs> Come on down to my funny shop and buy bread and oil. It's kind of a bop. Live, laugh, loaf. It's what it's about here at my store. Live, laugh, loaf. Come and buy my bread. It's always a chore. It's never a bore. Hello, sir. You buying oil and bread? Just oil? Um, only, only a bottle of oil. All right, all right. Yeah, I'm starting a house fire. This oil is flammable, right? <laughs> sir, I don't think I should sell you this with, uh, with the knowledge that you're imparting on me. No, no, it's okay. I have my arson license. Yeah, yeah fine, okay, whatever, dude. Um, should I report this guy to the police or... No, not a big deal. All right. See you later. Hello, sir. Would you like to buy bread and oil? Hell yeah. I love selling bread and oil. I'm still thinking about that guy who just bought oil. Should I report him to the police? Excuse me, sir. Sir, excuse me. Stop, stop. I need you to stop right now, sir. Please. Could you tell me about your machinations? Uh, sir, please. I, I have to I have to go to my store, but please, will you tell me what the oil is for? Sir? 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 He's, he's not responding. He's not responding. And I have a customer. Son of a bitch. I got to get back in there. I got to get back in there right now. Hi. Welcome to the two loaves of bread dude, for a reasonable price. Wow. Crazy kind of day. Look at that truck. Oh, shit. Son of a bitch. Now I'm leaving. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Iowa! 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 You fuck, let me fucking tell you, Buster. Coming in and breaking a hundred. That's just not cool. Coming in and fucking breaking a hundred right at the beginning of the fucking day. That sucks, dude. Don't come into the store and break a hundred right at the beginning of the day, right when I reset change. That's fucked. That is a psychotic thing to do, by the way, is to bring in, like, to, to bring in and break a hundred. Who needs two boxes of chunky chocolate cereal? You know what? I shouldn't judge. Who the fuck brings in? Who does that? Who, who the fuck? 
brings in a hundred to break at the beginning of the day. You gotta let me make change, Buster. Another one! Okay, now I think the game is mocking me. I, I do think the game is mocking me with this. I think now they're bringing in the hundreds just to fuck with me. What is it, bank day at the bank? Oh, sorry, I didn't know it was bank day. They're testing my patience. What am I, a fucking doctor? You're wearing a suit and tie. Hello, professor. What are you working on today? Mm, I'm seeing if I can put pasta, dry pasta between bread slices, if it'll make a wonderful sandwich. Thank you, professor. Great to see you. Thank you for only coming in with a 20. You enjoying retirement? Yes, sir. Uh, Kids still come to my home and throw eggs at my head when I'm mowing the lawn, but it's nice. I get a lot of time for making potions. Have a great day, Professor. You enjoy. You enjoy it. Come into my store. I have everything that you would ever want. I have everything that you would love, that you would want. Come into my store. This is my store. I'm having a good time. I'm sitting at the checkout counter and looking at my phone. Oh, yeah. Looking at my phone. Oh, yeah. Checking every media site that I have. Checking on the Twitter and the Facebook. Looking at my phone. Down here where nobody can see it. Hi, welcome to the store. What can I get for you today? Here. Just gonna... Just looking. Oh, please, no. Did you find everything you were looking for? Awesome. Oil and cereal. Fucked up. Oh, no change. Get out of here. You get to look at your phone because you own the store. True. Uh, sorry, one second, sir. I'd love to help you out, but uh, I gotta go write schedules, so... uh. Damn yeah, it, I'm not a manager yet. I can't do this. Hi. Yep. Damn, this is so sad. I can't hide in the back room and write schedules. This is fucked up. Come into my store and enjoy all of my accoutrements. I have so many things for you to buy at my store. Ha ha. Come into my store and enjoy all the things that I have available for you. It is so very cool. Bye. Have a great day. Hope you have a great... Hey, hope you have a great day. Hey. Hope you have a great day, sir. Enjoy. 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 No, you enjoy. No, I'll enjoy that break later when I get lunch. <laughs> no, enjoy. 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 Hey, how's it going? What can I do for you today? Awesome. My name is Brendan. I can't wait to help you. Two boxes of cereal. All right, let me grab the change there. Awesome. A dollar and change. Well, you know what they say. A dollar saved is a dollar earned. You have a great day, sir. Enjoy. Enjoy your day. Have a great day, sir. Awesome. 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 Hey, how's it going? What can I get for you today? Just a couple of boxes of cereal. Cool, cool, refreshing. Awesome. Oh, credit card. All right, let me just scan this right. Now, the price was a million dollars, right? <laughs> no way. Uh, don't worry. You have a great day, ma'am. Have a great day. Enjoy your day, ma'am. Hope you have a great day. How's it going? Buying some bread? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Are you thinking about getting any uh, getting any bread accessories today with that? No, no bread accessories, no jellies, no jams. All right, just some cereal. You're making cereal sandwiches? <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, let me just get this out for you. 50 cents. You enjoy. Have a great day, ma'am. You have a wonderful day. You put a smile on my face whenever I help, uh, help out a customer. A little bit of flour, huh? What are you doing? Making a bomb. What? Take my money now. Okay. We just... We just take that from you. You do... You should... You should... Okay. You have a... Have a great day, ma'am. Have a great... Same sweater! Same sweater! Same sweater! <laughs> Same sweater. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. And now that's a burrito. Now that's a burrito. There's no way you can make... Eating a burrito come back to haunt me. Right? But like, look at this dude. He's eating a burrito wrong. And it's like, I'm I'm just eating the burrito. I don't... I am not worried about... This is why I'm like, I'm not worried about this in the slightest. There is no way you can make eating burrito come back to haunt me. I just got the biggest... <laughs> I got the biggest, like, bite of cilantro. I got, like... I got, like, the biggest bite of cilantro... The second I was like, there will be no consequences for this burrito. I've been in like just a, like a mound of cilantro, which is fine normally, but it was like a whole mound of it. And I'm, oh my God. I like transcended for a moment. Do you have this cilantro taste like soap, Gene? No, I just, I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't prepped for like a big mound of cilantro. Ready? can we go into your mouth? No, I'm not putting my mouth around my camera. That should not happen. No. What do you say? There were burrito reactions in the Discord. Do I gotta go look at the Discord now? I gotta go into stream chat and look at the burrito reactions. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way eating a burrito will come back to haunt me. 
live haze reaction. Why am I like only selling to like eccentric businessmen? Oh my god, they're ripping all the cereal off the shelves. They're just ripping all the cereal off the shelves. These guys fucking hate me and the bread. Buying for big business, huh? Interesting. Can you not come into my store like one minute before close and then make the largest purchase ever? Get the fuck out of here. Businessmen have to buy things. They have to walk into the store one minute before close. It's all about business. Radical business, dude. Bringing business so hard. You know what? It'll be fine. It'll be fine. People love warm milk. They're gonna love warm milk tomorrow. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Tomorrow, people are gonna get the, the old cheese and the lovable curmudgeonly milk, and uh, they're gonna love it. Not gonna lie. People are gonna love old milk. I'm gonna have milk on sale. It's gonna be old milk on sale. Soluble milk. Milk on sale. Two dollars for milk. What about cheese? It's These aren't even good prices. Milk and cheese and oil and flour. Come on down to my store. Milk and cheese and bread and eggs and milk and cheese and eggs. Bread and milk and cheese and eggs and bread and milk and eggs. Milk and cheese and bread and cheese and bread and cheese and eggs. Shelby, it's not a murder store. Only three people died here. The blood is cleaned up. There are no bodies left. They even took the chalk outlines. I have a sign on the fucking door that says no true crime podcasts allowed inside my store. This is not a murder store anymore. It was a murder store. It's not a murder store. I'm turning it around. No. The light fixtures are finicky. I don't like the lights. It's not a murder store. Shelby, it's not a murder store. Stop calling it that. My wife is calling this a murder store. What do you think, sir? Is this a murder store? I'm gonna kill me there. Fucking, I'm gonna get a fucking. I'm gonna fucking kill you. Okay, have a great day, sir. This isn't a murder store. They took the bodies out. They cleaned up the blood. I have a sign right there that says "No True Crime Podcasts Allowed." You cannot come onto the premises. I will eject you. Only three people died here, and they couldn't conclusively determine that it was a murder. Shelby, they could not conclusively determine that the three dead people found here was, in fact, a triple homicide. Um, they could have died in a myriad of different ways. They, they, they determined that it was an accident, Shelby. They fell on those ritual daggers, Shelby. They fell on them. The, Shelby, they had a whoopsie, Shelby. It was determined by the police. The police came to the store and they said, this is a whoopsie. We're calling it. We're calling it a whoopsie. That's a po official police lingo. All right. They said it. They said, this is what we in the police business call a whoopsie. And then it was a whoopsie, and it was all taken care of, and it was all by the book. This was a whoopsie. For the layman, a layman who wouldn't understand, this was a whoopsie, and we are fine. We, abs we absolve all legal responsibility and culpability. Three people died, they fell on ritual daggers, their blood pooled around the room, and may, in fact, have summoned like a colossal creature from the great beyond. We don't worry about that, we don't think about that, we don't talk about that. It was a whoopsie, an official whoopsie. An official whoopsie report was filed. Those people, their families, they were notified. They were told about this. The whoopsie was internalized. What about the guy under the floorboards? We don't worry about him. His name is Jeremy. He just lives there. He's a cool guy. Sometimes he pops up and he gives me a free coin. It's not a normal coin. It's a weird kind of coin from a realm beyond our own. And I don't worry about him. He just lives under the floorboards and has a great time. Sometimes he comes in, he buys a bottle of oil, and then he rubs it all over himself. This is what it's like owning a grocery store. We don't need lights. You know what, though? I'm going to turn them on. Because it is just kind of getting annoying. So, lights on. Case filed under W for whoopsie. See, somebody in the chat fucking gets it. This was a whoopsie moment. Real whoopsie hours, real whoopsie moments. Did you like your oil, Jeremy? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. He loves it. See, do you hear him? He loves his oil. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It's 9 p.m. Sorry, sir. We're closed. Fine. All right, I guess. If you're buying if you're buying some oil, I guess, that's fine. All right. Going to be a great day. Going to be an excellent day. You sell bears at this store? No, I haven't been able to buy the Teddy Grahams yet. Eventually, I will have Teddy Grahams, though. Don't you love Teddy Grahams? Don't you love putting a, I don't know, getting a handful of Teddy Grahams, putting them in your hand, and then letting them sit in your mouth so they can get nice and moistened? We love Teddy Grahams. Teddy Grahams are cool. Sorry, surge pricing. The price of cheese is now $100. Sorry, surge pricing, surge pricing. Cheese is now $100. $100 cheese. $100 cheese. $100 cheese. Come and buy my $100 cheese. $100 cheese. $100 cheese. 
the cheese is too expensive. No, it's not. Shut up. $99 cheese. It's on sale. $99 cheese. It's on sale. Come on. Buy my $99 cheese. It's on sale. $99 cheese. $99 cheese. I want cash. $99 cheese. The cheese is too expensive. Oh, shit. $98 cheese. $98 cheese. Is it good now? Is $98 a good price? No, this is bullshit. You should have bought my $98 cheese. All right, they're not buying the cheese. They're not falling for it. Back to $3 cheese. A very good price for very good cheese. Now it's clearance cheese. You'll buy my cheese. I love my clearance cheese. Don't talk to me before I've had my big pack of clearanced out Velveeta. I love eating Velveeta right by the rectangle. I rip it out of the package. I love eating Velveeta by the rectangle. It's one of my favorite bits. Buy my clearance cereal. It's been sitting around four days. Nobody is buying it. Nobody wants my Lay's. I don't even have potato chips yet. Hey, how much is this milk? Seven million dollars. you please leave? My store is closed. Please stop buying things from me. My store is closed. Get out of my store, please. I gotta close. I gotta close before more customers come in. They're ruining me. Hey, Price Master, how much is a sponge? Five hundred thousand dollars. Freddy, you're not rotating your stock. I'm supposed to rotate it? Okay. Was that good? Did I rotate it properly? Is that how you rotate it? Get it? Because I... <laughs> When I buy Among Us SpaghettiOs, oh shit, that's the imposter. Thank you. Boo! 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 You can boo me all you want! It won't stop me! I don't know what kind of face that was. I'm sorry. That scared me, actually. I got a little afraid of that. That's, I didn't know who that was. I looked into the camera for a second, and I was like, who was that? That scared me for a second. I can't do that again. Brendan, how much would I need to tip you as a cashier to fart into the intercom? I'm not doing that. Somebody's gonna get pink eye that way. I love the joining of a Daniel stream. It's the best roulette game of what you might hear. I mean, yeah, I always talk about that. When you join the stream, you have no idea what I'm going to be talking about. It's like a little lottery. It's like a little jackpot. The only thing you can be sure of is you have no idea what's going to be going on. You just know that something is probably going to be happening. Ready? Can the music in your store be Fortnite music, please? It will make you cool. Oh yeah, sure. One second, let me uh. Customers love this. They love coming into this store. They love coming into the store. They just love coming. I'm playing this into the intercom, yeah. They love hearing it. <laughs> I'm not playing Fart Step anymore. I'm not doing it. I'm not playing. I'm better than Fart Step. I'm not playing Fart Step anymore. I'm not doing it. Oh, <laughs> uh, you can feel the brain cells in me dying. One dollar. Enjoy. Couldn't find flour. Come on. It's right. Uh... How many flour? I have one bag. Is she coming back in? She's like, holy shit, they got flour. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You got flour? Everybody in this store has pink eye now. Yeah. It's fine. I'm going to be adding antibiotics to the shelves soon, so don't want to be a bubby. Don't want to be a bubby at all. I'm not worried about it. Brendan, will you ever accuse any of the customers of fail RP? I don't know what that means. I don't understand what that means. I don't fathom that. I'm sorry. Me, I wish my ass could fathom what you just said there, but I don't fathom it. I'm not going to fathom it. Did somebody say Fortnite Gooner memes earlier. What's the one fucking like, what, guys, what if Raven Team Leader had an emote where she took her fucking pants off and she fucking farted? A real video that somebody made? Oh, damn, it's not a, <laughs> a great time for a raid. Hey, thanks for the raid. Thanks for the raid, Rick Swaz. I appreciate it. <laughs> great time to walk into the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Brennan just says that in front of the customer. Yeah. These are all regulars. I can I can say whatever I want in front of these guys. The fuck out of my store. Get the fuck out of my store. Get the fuck out of my store. Yeah, fine. I'll sell you garbage. Thanks. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Now get the fuck out of my store. Out of my store. I gotta I gotta go. I have a cigarette break. I'm on a cig I'm on a cigarette break right now. Yeah, you can buy whatever you want. I'm on a cigarette break right now. I don't care. I do not care. Buy whatever you want. Pick up whatever you want. I'm not coming over to there to help you. I'm on a cigarette break. You can come into my store too, huh? I dare you to stand. Wait, wait in line. No, wait in line. Yeah, a customer's waiting. Good. I'm on a cigarette break. I'm not worried about this. I'm not doing this shit. I'm on a break right now. I'm on a cigarette break. I'm not talking to nobody. I'm on a 15. I'm counting. I'm on. I'm on a timer right here. I'm counting. I'm on a 15 minute cigarette break right now. I'm not coming into the store. All right. I'm not fucking doing it. Yo, oh, yeah, please, sir. Will you come in and check me out? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm on a cigarette break. I can't do this shit right now. If you want me to you know, help yourself, just take it and leave. 
Store's closed anyway. Get out of here. No, I'm not. I'm not coming in. I, I said 15. It hasn't even been two minutes yet. Please help me. Please check me out. No, 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 no. I'm on a cigarette break here. I'm not helping you out. You want me to come in there and help you out? I'm on my determined 15-minute break at the end of the day, and then I got to restock shelves. Not happening, Buster. You want me to stop smoking a cigarette in the middle of my shift? No, no, no. You come out here and you tell me. You tell me what you think about that, huh? Tell me what you think of the store, huh? I'm on a cigarette break. I own this store. This is my store. I can stop working and just start smoking when I want to. <sighs> retail face, retail face. Hey, thank you for coming to the store. Oh, my God. What are we picking up here today? Oh, my God. You got a little pasta, a little bit of cereal. Oh, my God. All right. You have a great day now. Have a great night. Whoa, what do you got here? Oh, my God. Oh, $14.50. Oh, my God. Have a great day. What would you do if somebody came up to you on your break and sucker socked you? I would not be wearing my uniform. Whenever I was on break at Best Buy or at GameStop in my seven years of retail, I would immediately take off any identifiers. No, not happening. I'm not having customers talk to me while I'm on my mandated break. It's not happening. Nope. I am so sorry. Um, You can find somebody else to help you. I, I don't give a shit. The second I'm on a break, uh -uh. I'm not wearing any kind of uniform or any identifying markers. Like, I am not... I'm not going to be rude or anything. I'm not going to be like, hey, fuck off. I'm on break. I'm going to be like, hey, I'm on break. Uh... Um, uh, let me see if I can get somebody else for you. Like, I'm not going to be a dick. I'm not going to be rude to a customer when I worked in a retail store, but like my face when you wouldn't help the guests find their product, no matter what. <laughs> Hell no. Fuck. Absolutely not. When I'm on the clock. Absolutely. Yes. When I'm off the clock. Hell no. That's my time. You got to learn to manage that shit. Otherwise you lose your mind. Retail employees who give too much lose their fucking mind. They fall into the void. Trust me. You cannot give too much in retail. Otherwise you die. Somebody with seven years of retail experience. The best advice I ever, I ever... I ever realized I could give to somebody going into retail is don't give your all. Give the minimum amount that you need to give to make sure you don't get in trouble. I'd stay up, straight up set an alarm and fall asleep in the break room during lunch. I would never fall asleep. I'd just be like, this is my break. I am on break. If somebody needs something, that's too bad. I'm on break. But once I'm off break, I'll get right back into it. And if somebody else can't help the customer and they can't wait for me, uh, I'm on break. Calculated mediocrity. Yeah. I mean, hey, if you want me to do well, uh, incentivize it. When I worked at Best Buy, my best, like, month there was they incentivized good performance for a little bit. It was awesome. We got, like, gift cards and won, like, raffles and shit. Then they stopped doing that. And I was like, all right, well, I'll give you exactly what I need to give you to not get in trouble. Otherwise, I'm going to lose my mind. Right, have you seen what the application process is for retail jobs now? Those 150 question personality tests where you have to answer questions like, do you hate free time? And do you love working under extreme stress? I mean, those have always been around. I don't know how far they go now, but whenever I used to, whenever I used to apply for like retail work, it would always be like the weird personality test where it's like, oh fuck, how do I answer this? How do I answer this? What what is the right answer to give? What do they want from me? Do they want me to be a sociopath, or are they are they see are they seeking sociopaths, or are they not looking for sociopaths? What do they want from me? That's just the way the crookie cumbles. Personality test: Do you like working in a family environment? Personality test: Do you think your coworkers as a family is your? Is, do you think your coworkers like a family? Do you enjoy spending time with your coworkers as a family? Horrible, horrible, horrible things. Horrible nightmares. Do you like working in a fast-paced environment? Do you think your coworkers is a family? Horrible, 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 bad. Any job that treats it like a family you don't want unless you can't afford life without it, true. I I respect the hell out of retail employees. I do, I do, I do. As somebody who's been in that hole, uh, I, I always, always. Whenever I go to any retail store, I salute at the, uh, the cash register, always. I respect the hell out of retail employees. They're God's strongest warriors. The U.S. should impl implement mandatory retail service instead of the draft. I mean, hey, mandatory retail service would make a lot of people more um, uh, empathetic, I think. Because then everybody gets to see how crazy people are out there in the real world. Flour was a big seller yesterday. True, true, true. So we better order more today, am I right, gamers? Now, flour. Let's talk flour. We gotta have that flour buster. Let's talk oil. How about oil? Let's talk about oil. Awesome. You're doing great, champ. Doing awesome, bud. Hey, look at you, bud. Your store's doing great, and everybody loves you. Yeah. Yeah. You either come out of retail being nicer to workers, or you come out of psycho. It's weirdly polarizing. I mean, I came out both, so. You, it could be both. <laughs> I need to buy 18 packs of toilet paper. Hi there, welcome to my store. Hope you found anything you're looking for. Thank you for your money. I appreciate it greatly. Oh, here, let me give you $4.50. Oh, I almost forgot a dollar there. <laughs> Enjoy, have a good day. Love seeing you, love seeing you. Have a great day, ma'am. Oh, coming to my store, coming to buy my bread. 
reasonable price on Wonder Bread. I'm, one side. I'm, I'm taking a cigarette break. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Here's your cheese. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I can't sell cigarettes yet. I don't have the cigarettes unlocked yet. When are they going to let me sell a bunch of cigarettes and then I'll fill the store with only cigarettes? I thought this was a grocery store. It was. But now I can afford the cigarette license. I don't need anything else. Do you have any funny experiences when you worked retail? Oh. <laughs> oh. The problem with retail stories is like I genuinely don't remember most of my time in retail because it like I just I, I wormed it out of my head. So like I barely remember anything except for the really awful stories and I've told those so many times. I've told the I've, I don't want to talk about the roach stories ever again. I feel like we've already covered all of that. That's the problem with retail stories is like yeah everybody who's worked retail uh, for more than a year has a bunch of funny stories but like I can't remember them all. I gotta I gotta like just fucking I gotta just like center myself and not think about it otherwise I lose my mind. I got this for you. They didn't have Mountain Dew. Yeah, I did have, um, when I worked at Best Buy, I had a fan come in, and, uh, they, they bought me a Mellow Yellow, and they were like, hey, Brendan, Brendan Daniel, right? And I was like, hey, yeah, yeah, I got this for you. You guys didn't have Mountain Dew. I was gonna get you a Mountain Dew, but, uh, yeah, I got you this instead, and I was like, oh, yeah. Do you have any good retail stories? Yeah, I just don't want to think about them. I, uh, I, I, like, I, it, it is, it is a, it is like a miasma of a billion different feeds of information. Uh, I, it's not that I don't have any retail stories, it's I have too many, and it takes me a while to parse through them, and then I don't remember most of them, because some of them were so ridiculous that they overshadow everything else. The stream right after you quit being a Valhalla stream is still so funny. True, true. I had a regular once bring me orange juice because he found out I was sick and working. That was neat. That was cool. That's like the, one of the nice things I think about. That was a nice day at, 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 uh, that was GameStop. That was a nice day at GameStop. I, I once had a coworker over here, uh, I had, a, I had a coworker ask about my dad, like, they got really inquisitive about my childhood, and I was just talking about it a little bit, like, not getting into too much detail. And then I had a coworker come up from behind and start talking about, yeah, uh, when I was a kid, my dad would burn cigarettes into my arms, look! And then she showed, showed us her arms, and they were just normal, there wasn't anything wrong with them, and then I found out that, like, her, her dad is actually just, like, an incredibly rich guy, and, like, bought her home and pays for everything for her, and she just, like, walks around work lying to everybody. And that was a weird experience. Just meeting somebody who was like, I, I'm going to immediately butt into any conversation and lie about anything and everything. I would say, oh, I did have an old guy uh, try to recruit me to his barbershop quartet. That's one. Um, I was working and he's like, hey, son, you got a nice voice. Here. And he handed me a business card for a church and he's like, if you ever want to join as a baritone or a bass, just give us a call. We're looking for more people for a barbershop quartet. I was like, no, I, sorry, sir. I'm not interested. I don't have the time after work. And he would come in day after day for a whole week and ask me to join his barbershop quartet. And I was like, no, sir, I appreciate that. That's very nice of you. Um, I cannot join your barbershop quartet. And then he'd come in at least once a month and then just recap his medical problems to me. That was at Best Buy. That was at Best Buy. The, the barbershop quartet thing was at Best Buy. He would come in once a month and just tell me about all the different surgeries he was getting, which is what an old, per all, what, I, I guess what an old people, what an old people do. They tell you about the health, even if you don't ask. Had to tell me in detail about what his colonoscopy was going to be like. All the polyps. Learned a lot about polyps that day. Didn't want to learn about- didn't- didn't want to learn a lot about polyps that day, not gonna lie. I once diffused an angry old person who was like almost yelling at our uh, mobile team at Best Buy. Uh, because he had a, uh, fuck what was it? It was a, uh, it was an older fantasy book called like Spellsinger that I'd read as a kid. He had it like in his hands. And so I diffused him by being like, oh, Spellsinger. Love that book. The guy smoked so much weed in that. And he stopped yelling and then he talked to me about books, uh, for like, uh, 40 minutes, 40 minutes to 50 minutes. Good diffusing. I was very good at diffusing things sometimes, but also like I learned the retail, retail Kung Fu, which is if the customer is going to be mad, no matter what. Um, you call a manager. Not your- not your problem. As a- as a- as a- as a boots-on-the-ground employee, the second a customer starts to get frustrated with you, you call a manager and let them handle it. It's their problem then. They're there to manage the people. If you are told, do not break store policy, and this person is angry that you will not break store policy, okay, well, I will get a manager and they'll be right with you. Learn to delegate things to a manager really fast. Sucks for me when I'm the manager. I- I don't mind- helping out with a manager, like, trying to, like, help smooth things over for them, unless they're the type of manager who is specifically thus. Because I've dealt with managers who are specifically thus a lot, 
in my years of retail, which is, sorry, Brendan, here's my numbers. Could you handle it? Maybe I got to write schedules. And it's like, how, why does it take, why does it take, why does it take, why does it take five hours to write schedules? I know it doesn't. There's no fucking way. There's no fucking way for a week, for like two weeks out. There's no fucking way it takes more than like an hour or two. There's no fucking way. And I know that there's a program that does that shit too. There's no fucking way it takes that long to write schedules. No fucking way. You can't use that shit on me. I'm aware of the power of computers. I know about Excel, all right? I have Excel knowledge. I played EVE Online for three hours. I know about spreadsheets. That's the worst, I think. I fucking hate those. Sorry, bud. It's gonna take me a while to write schedules. It's like, why? You have everybody's availability. And then it's like, yeah. And then it's like, oh, the schedule they wrote is the exact same as last week. I definitely get it if somebody needs, like, time off or if somebody's on vacation. Uh, if somebody quits, like, it being a little bit harder. But, like, there's there's no freaking way that it takes longer than, like, two hours maximum. That's the uh, the manager's joker's trick, though. Customers get so mad when you tell them you won't give them $5 off a $9 item just because they found it in the wrong spot. Oh, dude, I... Usually, if there is, like, a customer incident when I worked retail, I would be first line of defense when I worked customer service. Because I was two years of customer service at Best Buy, one year sales. And that year in sales, I did, like, everything. I would carry TVs out. I would do customer service. I would do sales. Because they were kind of doing the, oh, you got to work in every department kind of thing. And I was like, listen here. I will help in every department that needs it, but I'm not fucking around with mobile phone plans. I will do anything but fuck around with mobile phone plans. I am not getting into somebody's account and trying to, like, figure out how that shit works. Anything but. I was a terrible, terrible employee. I, I was like, I will do anything but that. I will carry out 50 to 60, 75-inch TVs all day for people, but I will not. I swear to you, the one thing that I do not want to do, the one thing I do not want to do is fuck around on people's mobile phone plans for, like, an hour to two per customer. No, thank you. Bless up to people who have to work on other people's mobile phones, because um, that's a nightmare. Never retail, but one of the best things any worker can learn is that you don't need to request time off. You need to tell them ahead of time you won't be available, and it's their problem to figure it out. Yeah, but, like, the problem is, is that's when the guilt tripping begins. Like, there are, there are manager conferences that are all about how to emotionally manipulate your employees. Um, one, of the, one of my favorite manager tactics uh, that has been used on me that stopped working after my first year at Best Buy was, we're really going to need you to come in, Brendan. Uh, we can't do it without you. Brendan, we really need you to come in. You're going to have to find somebody to cover. Trick question. If somebody asks you to find somebody to cover, um, that's not your job to find coverage unless you're a manager. It's not your job to find coverage as the worker. If you are sick, it's not your job to fucking call coworkers. You can do it if you like your manager and if you want to help them out. Um, but that's their job. That's that's the job description, but also yeah, I mean there's the there's the guilt tripping and the emotional manipulation and there's a whole there's a whole like there's a whole um theorem to this. Let's up to cool managers though. I I've had two cool managers before and I really liked them. They they exist. I promise. My my GameStop manager Justin was a cool guy and I loved working for him. Uh, and I only quit GameStop because he stopped working there and he quit. And then Best Buy, I loved my customer service manager, which I also quit after she quit. So. A good manager will keep me in a retail store. I'm sorry, Brendan. We asked everybody else. You know, I wouldn't ask you if you didn't need you. My response is always, no, can't come in. Cameron, you don't know about my evil trip, my evil trick, which is um, my last year of working at Best Buy when it was my day off, I'd turn off my phone. If my mom needed me or if somebody needed me, Facebook, I'll have it open. Or I just won't check. I'm turning off my phone. I'm not dealing with this shit. It's my weekend. I'm not coming in. <laughs> Brendan, come on. Don't you want overtime? No, I don't need the money. I don't want to come in. No, thank you. Which is bad, you know, coworkers can be upset about that attitude too, which is understandable, but like, when I'm at work, I'm at work, and I, I, I give as much as I can. When I'm not at work, no, nah, no thank you. I'm at home, I, I gotta work on shit. I, I do not respond well to the guilt-tripping manipulation tactics that retail managers use. I fucking hate that shit. I'm gonna start uh, fighting in the mosh pit. You will find me in the mosh pit with my fists out. What if we started manager guilt-tripping you when you didn't want to stream? Yeah, but I'm always streaming. So like, <laughs> even when I should, even when I, even when I probably shouldn't be streaming, I'm streaming. Come on now, not a, I'm not breaking a hunt. You're silly. You're silly. You're silly. Hundred dollars. You're so silly. Ridiculous. I'm gonna run out of change. They need to add going to the bank to this game to really drive people insane. Do other streamers who haven't worked retail who are playing this is like a fun. I love working a supermarket. They need to add the horrors of war to this game. 
The horrors of having somebody come in with a $100 bill at the beginning of your shift right after you make change and get back from the bank and then they immediately wipe out your goddamn cash register. We need the horrors of war. Yeah, I like to stream. I like to. You don't need to guilt trip me. I love doing this. I love doing this. I'm sorry. I love being silly. They should add lying about not having change for big notes. I do that shit all the time. Oh, 100%. Somebody, uh, when I worked at GameStop especially, because we'd only have so much in change, if somebody wanted to come in with 100 right at the beginning of the day and buy like a $10 thing to break 100, he'd be like, I can't take 100 right now, man. Sorry. It's like, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? I'm, oh, God. Oh, God. I forgot to set a price. Must be free. What did I forget to sell? Oh, shit. Oh, oh, fuck. What did I forget to set? Oh, God. I must be freed the spaghetti. Oh, shit. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. Almost must be freed the spaghetti. I was freaking out. I was freaking out. Oh, hey, no price tag on the spaghetti buster. <laughs> Must be free. Would you like anything else today, sir? Oh, only if you got a million dollars. Out of my store, 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 out of my store. Spaghetti has a price now. There's a cost associated to spaghetti. Spaghetti has a price. You have to fall for it. Now, nah, the large bill is nothing. Put in awkward and creepy customer encounters. A large bill is something if you're a smaller store. If you're like a big box chain, it's not that big of a deal. But if you're like a smaller store with only about $200 in change in each register and somebody wants to break 100 at the beginning of the day, like, nah, no fucking way. Especially if, like, especially if it's immediately followed by, like, a cash trade-in at GameStop where somebody brings in games and wants cash for them. And it's like, dude, I have $100 in my registers right now because I just broke 100. No, there are a lot of stores where you literally, oh my god, you literally cannot break big bills at the beginning of the day. it just be like that. Just print more money, idiot? What, do you think I have a big money printer in the back of the store? Print more money, Alfred! Get back there and print more dollar dollar bill. He can't hear me. He's got his AirPods in. He's stocking in the back in the freezer. He's got his AirPods in. Ooh, cereal. Having a cereal party, are you? I understand. That's what businessmen do. They love having the cereal party. Just go to the bank. Yeah, true. Bank. 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 Oh, bank. Bank? There a bank around here? Bank? Oh, bank? 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 Where bank? Oh, bank? There a bank around here? You go, oh shit, I got a customer. I gotta fucking go. I gotta be hop my way back over there. Back to my store. Gotta get back to my store. Hi. Bottle of water for you, huh? They were just raiding. They were just raiding the store and I got back and they were like, Oh, I gotta pay for these now? What the fuck, dude? Oh, I gotta pay for this shit? Yeah. Hello, customer. They call them customers. Why can't I say fuck? If, if I work in retail, they call them customers. Why can't I say fuck? Anybody else have the retail experience of like, we don't call them customers. They're guests. Like the big movement to start calling customers guests. You're not a salesperson. You're an associate. We love helping out our guests. Hello, sir. You're a valued guest, and I'm a guest service associate. The anguish of calling the guests. Hello, sir. As a valued guest, did you find what you needed? Oh, shit. Big business? Oh, shit. Mr. Anderson, I need milkies, and I need them now. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, I will buy this milk, and you will sell it to me. Otherwise, there may be consequences. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me help you out here, sir. Yes, sir. I'll get your milk for you, sir. Yes, sir. Have a great day, sir. Yes, sir. Enjoy your milk, sir. Wish you could be like a... I wish I could be a different kind of grocery store. I'd love, um... Updates to this game that I'd love. Uh... Candy? A lot more candy? And I want two machines out front of the store. Here, Here's like the Brendan Vision, right? Two machines out in front of the... I feel like I'm small. I'm so small. I'm so small. Um... Brendan Vision, right? Brendan... Here's the... Here's the Brendan Vision, right? Two machines out in front of the store, right? Series one and series two, homies. We need to put homies outside of the store. I need homie vending machines right there. Just two of them. Two homies vending machines right there. Improve the game by a thousandfold. Add homies to the game. Now. I need two homie machines right here out in front of the store. Is what I want. I want to be able to sell people little homie figurines. We need it. They need little, we need little homies. What are homies? They're homies. You don't know what a homie is? They're homies. Little homies. Oh, you don't know what homies are? Oh my God. All right. Well, let me educate you here. When I was a kid, I would often times go to uh, the grocery store with my grandfather. And sometimes we go to this little um, uh, Mexican grocery store. And out in front, they had these little, little, little toy vending machines. Um, 
and they had the homies in there. The homies were homies. These are the homies. You get little figurines. You could just put them in your mouth. You can place them around the town. Homies, dude. They got homies. You can get so many different homies. They got a billions of homies. Like genuinely homies. You don't know about homies. We fucking love, we love that. I, I love collecting homies as a kid. They were like 50 cents, a dollar. You put them in the vending machine and you get a couple out. Real millennial core. Real millennial core moment is bringing up the homies. Yeah. They were in like, they were in the little vending machines outside of stores. Most part, I just saw the little ninjas. They were different colors and poses. Yeah. There were, I mean, there were a lot of different little collectibles they were trying to get. You remember the sticky hands? I wa I've always wanted to buy my dream object, right? If I ever get like, this will never happen in a million years, but if I ever get like big fuck streamer, like huge fuck streamer, like fucking oh, radiating pure miasmic energy, right? And power. I'd buy a huge sticky hand. Just a bit, like a fucking massive one. I want one big. I want a fucking 50 to $100 sticky hand. And I just want to whack it at things. Dream object is a big sticky hand. If I can't have a big sticky hand, then what's even the fucking point of streaming? It gets so dirty so quick. You're so fucking right. But for one stream, it would be such a fucking funny bit to have a big sticky hand. I don't know what I'd do with it either. I'd probably smash watermelons with it. Gallagher type stream. I really want to do a Gallagher type stream, but I feel like that'd be wasteful. I'd love to buy like five watermelons and smash them with different things. And then that's like the stream. It's like 20 minutes and then I turn it off. Like as big as, I'm talking, yeah, as big as a person. I'm, I want a sticky hand so big that it would be like a clickbait thumbnail in a YouTube video. Prices are going up because I own a grocery store and I'm still telling everybody that there are shit problems and that's why the prices are going up it's not because i want more money oh no prices are going up because we still can't get some of this stuff shipped i am lying to my customers so they have to pay me more money we love it we love inflating the pot we love inflating the prices big and around we love it when the prices are huge Premium prices, $4 cheese. The prices need to be larger. We love it when the prices are huge. Be careful how you set those prices, Brendan. The lesson is hubris. Shush. Shush. Don't tell anybody. The customers never know. Never, never, never. They're never gonna know. Did you say big and round prices? Welcome to Brendan Daniels Grocery Store, where the prices are big and round, and after you buy our products, so will you be. Full of sugar! Big, fat, round prices. Oh, I need to be price. I hate this stream. Do you really? Do you really? Sorry, I got co I, I know I got customers, but... Do you really hate this stream? Because, like, I'm on a cigarette break. Sorry. Yeah, I don't care if they're buying anything. I'm on a cigarette break. Oh, sorry, I gotta go help out some customers. Hooey. Alright, I gotta get back in there. Hooey, 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 hooey. Oh, look at all the milk he's buying. He's having a cereal party! Rich man, cereal party, white woman, egg party. Look at me throwing eggs at my friends, buying oil till the fun never ends. Hey, Brendan, if you were a valued guest in chat's epic supermarket experience, what drink would you gravitate towards first? Here at ESE, we value your customers' opinions. Y'all got slime? Yeah, I came to the grocery store. I'm not from the area around here. I'm uh, up, 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 up in here for work. Uh, Y'all got slime? You know, back in uh, Alabama, they got slime at every grocery store. Y'all got slime? I'm looking for slime. Premium slime, even. I, um... I can't seem to find it anywhere. Y'all got slime? Where's the slime at? I've been looking for the slime for a couple of hours now, and I can't find any slime. Y'all got slime in here? Sorry, only thing my diet restricts me. I can't eat nothing else but slime. Y'all got slime? And I need that gluten-free slime or whatever my wife is telling me. Gluten-free or whatever. Don't give me don't give me no sass. I need that slime. Don't talk to me before I've had my big bucket of slime either. Y'all ain't got slime up here, do you? Y'all don't even know what slime is. Okay, y'all got sweet tea? Y'all ain't got sweet tea. What the fuck? What the fuck do you mean you ain't got sweet tea? The big jug? No? What are you fucking crazy? You ain't got slime? You ain't got sweet tea? Oh my fucking god damn. This place fucking blows. No sweet tea, no slime? I ain't got nothing here. They're ridiculous. I think the funniest southern accent encounter I ever had was at GameStop where somebody came in and like as a, as a retail employee sometimes you prejudge customers only to get like uh immediately beat the fuck out by their gaming preferences especially at GameStop. So I had a guy come in, thought he was a farmer, 
like I was already thinking like, okay, probably buying farming simulator because farmers love farming simulator, especially in like Iowa, right? This dude came up to me, dirty work overalls, like just incredibly farmer core. And he looks at me and he's like, y'all got Atlier Ryzen from the PS3? I'm like what? Yeah, Atlier, the little, uh, alchemy little uh, JRPG. It's like, I never judged a customer ever again, except for the old people. Um, ju only the old people. Like a, a day in the life, I had a, I had a farmer once ask me for a copy of one of the Atlier games on PS3. And I was like, you know what? Never going to judge again. However, I will say, every time I assumed in my four years at GameStop, every time I assumed that somebody was coming in to look at Sonic video games, I had 100% hit accuracy. I had a 100% hit accuracy on people who buy Sonic games and people who bought PSP games. What do Sonic gamers look like? I want to say crusty gamers, but a little bit more cleaned up. Weirdly enough, Sonic gamers were usually like crusty, crusty gamers, but like cleaned up. Has been my experience. Like... Crusty and crungly, but they didn't smell, right? I, I hate to tell you this, but every interaction I've had with a Sonic fan, they have not smelled bad. The worst smelling customers have been and always will be the, uh, I either want to say the Call of Duty crowd or I want to say anybody that was looking at PSP games. What gamers drew the crust? Eh, PSP games drew the crustiest of gamers. PSP and 3DS. And honestly, you know, now that I think about it, honestly, I think the crustiest of gamers, bargain bin Xbox 360. Angriest customers, uh, parents. I've talked about this encounter before, but I guess I'll regale you. This is the time to retell some of my retail stories. Uh, I had a customer come in uh, at GameStop while me and my manager were closing. Uh, it was about 10 minutes before close, and he was looking to buy games with his kid. So he's with his son. They're looking at games. The son finds Tearaway for the PS4. It's like 10 bucks, right? It's like Tearaway, it's the Vita Vita video game that got ported to PS4. Um, now, Tearaway, fun fact, has a reversible cover. Tearaway, you can either be a, 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 a guy character or a girl character, right? Well, the ver reversible cover had been set to the girl character. So the dad immediately was like, this is a girl video game. I'm not letting you buy a girl video game. Kid has an absolute mental breakdown. And the dad's trying to do anything to console him. It is now 9 p.m., uh, we're trying to like kind of scoot them out of the store. Uh, the kid goes and the dad's like, here, play this Crash Bandicoot game because the Crash Bandicoot remaster trilogy had just came out at the time. And the dad's like, oh yeah, this is a boys game, a game for boys. Awesome boy game, right? Crash Bandicoot, boy game. Uh, you want to buy this, right? And the kid's like, this is hard. I hate this. This sucks. I want that other game. I want Tearaway. That's like, okay, okay, whatever. Comes up to the counter, buys Crash Bandicoot. Then his kid has an utter mental breakdown and he sits there for another 10 to 15 minutes trying to like sit down and console his kid instead of like picking him up and taking him out of the store. Right? So the dad comes up to the counter. He's like, listen, man, I want to return this. Um, if he's acting this way, I'm going to return it. Like, uh, he, uh, this is how it's going to be. So when you return something at GameStop, you have to ask for customer information. Right? Because GameStop doesn't want people taking advantage of the return policy. So when you enter a, a return into the computer, you need to grab their first name, last name, and address. That's just part of the computer's process. There's no way around that. Uh, like, that's that's never usually a problem, right? So I say, okay, let's do the return. We set it up. We start working on the return. Uh, I start working on the return. My manager is just kind of there, like, trying to be like, please get out of the store. Uh... I ask for his name, and he gives me his name, and I'm like, cool, 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 and for the return, I just need an address. And then it was like I had seen into the void, i.e. this dad looked at me, and he went from, like, normal eyes to crazy eyes. Do you know the shift when somebody, like, has a hint of madness inside of them, but, like, they don't usually show it out in public? This guy flipped from uh, uh, normal asshole to mental psycho. I could see it in his eyes. This like fucking like deranged. He went from like to He went he went he Yeah, my address is uh none of your fucking business and he fucking yelled at me. Like and I'm just sitting there GameStop employee like yells at me out of nowhere. Like just fucking I am taken aback. I am shaken. I'm like what the, what? Excuse me? And then he takes the game covered in plastic. He's like just fucking take it. 
Just fucking take it. Me and my son have had our information stolen before. I've had my identity stolen. My seven-year-old, ten-year-old son has had his identity stolen. This is not happening. And I'm like, what? Your, your ten-year-old has had his identity stolen? What were they doing? I Like, fucking, were they trying to ride a children's ride? And they were like, a fully grown adult? And they needed his kid's social security number? I'm like, What? So then the guy calms down immediately. Like he goes from like psycho on me, 100% throws the game at me. And then he goes and his son is still crying and throwing a fit on the ground. And then Ed walks over and goes from like psycho and flips over to, come on, buddy, we got to get out of here. Come on, buddy, we got to leave. Come on, buddy, we got to get out of here. Doesn't just pick his son up and leave. 10 more minutes. It is now 945. We are 45 minutes past close. And my manager has to walk up and say, hey, guys. We need you to evacuate. We need you to, to like, leave the premises. Um, otherwise, we're going to have to call the police. He just straight up is like, you need to leave or we're calling the cops. And the guy's like, okay. And then he picks up his son and he leaves, which he could have just done at the beginning. His son is like a, a, a small boy. He's a child. And then it takes us half an hour to close from, so from like 9.45 to like 10.15. We are still in the store. Uh, we leave. The dad is still outside in his truck. The light is on and he's still consoling his son because he didn't want to buy his son tear away because he thought it was a girl's game. And then he freaked out because Crash Bandicoot remastered or re-insane trilogy was like his son was freaking out. So I just no idea. Just an insane moment. Um, Another weird thing happened to me when I worked at GameStop is at the mall. GameStop, I covered a shift there. I covered like a week or two of shifts at the mall GameStop because in my town we used to have three. One by the Walmart, one in the mall, one over in the Nebraska part of my city. Um, and I covered a, a, a set of shifts at the mall. Uh, one day I'm working and I'm just doing stuff. Two people come into the store and I'm like, hey guys, can I get you anything? And one of them turns around and looks at me like a fucking statue moving 3D. I swear to God he didn't move his feet. He swivels over to me and he goes, what do you fucking want from me? And I'm like, and then he leaves. And I'm like, what? 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 And he just, he just like came into the store. I asked him, hey, can I help you with anything? He, he, he like tank controlled, spun around, and he just like screamed at me. <laughs> I don't know how to handle that. I was like, oh. Uh, oh. Uh. <laughs> I also hated working at the mall because somebody who's six foot five, um, I would have people just come up to me and like I had it three times only at the mall game stop never anywhere else where I worked never at Best Buy I had three times where people would come into the store and be like can I get your picture can I get a picture with you and I was like no and I don't think they were like they knew I who I was I was just like no what no what I don't want your what no why do people? Why do? Why would you want to take a picture with me? No. No. Absolutely. Why? No. It's weird. I can see why Brendan doesn't like to leave the house. I don't. I don't. I have weird interactions with people. I don't interact with the world at large. I don't. I cannot handle it anymore. It's too much energy. It's so. It's so much. It's. It rips away a piece of your soul. I'm like. I can't do it. I, there's too many weirdos out there. That, for some reason, want to interact with me and tell me about DARPA weather controlling machines. And that's why they're buying wired earbuds. Like, I don't, I don't want to think about it. I don't, I don't want to go outside. It's just outside is scary. And there's people out there and they want to, like, converse with me about, like, DARPA weather control machines. And it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to think about it. I'm sorry. Especially old people. I, I can't have another old person interaction the way that I did in retail ever again. Like, I can't do it. I cannot do it. Bless, bless anybody who can fucking put up with that shit. But, like, I, I, how, how could anybody handle that on a daily basis? Especially old dudes. Like the worst, especially trucker old dudes. Because, like, I don't know, the amount of people that would immediately start jumping into a political rant the second, like, you're helping them out, where they'd be like, yeah, this is awesome. Anyway, tell me your thoughts on race purity. And it's like, I'm, I'm trying to sell you a Vizio 50-inch TV. I, 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 no. No. I'm just trying to talk to you. I'm just trying to tell you about this Vizio. I don't want to talk about this. No. You know how people... Oftentimes, I think, don't understand how many fucking crazy people there are out there until you work like retail, right? Until you work retail or service, I, I genuinely think there are people who are out there who are like, there are people like this in the real world. They don't exist. They're not real. Go out there. Go work retail. Go work food service. 
and like meet real people and understand that like real people are cool. Um, but also there are real people who think that there are goblins inside of their router that are controlling their internet. And the government put the goblins inside of the router. And that's just a normal thing that some people are like, yep, there are goblins in my router. They're hacking all my wires. And you just got to like sell them a Bose stereo system and just deal with it. Those are real people. People are incredibly unhinged. And there's a minor amount of people that do it just to fuck with you. But there's also, there's just people who are just genuinely unwell who are out there in the world. Not a thought in their head. And it's like, I'm sorry, there are no goblins in your router. I, I don't, do you want me to sell you a anti-goblin router package. You know how many people in the last year worked at Best Buy that would come in to be like, do you guys have a 5G blocker? I once had a woman argue with me for an hour because she thought you could just come to the Best Buy and buy a cell phone jammer. A cell phone jammer? You were gonna walk into the Best Buy and buy a cell phone jammer? That's just a thing you think you can buy? Why do you think you could just walk into the Best Buy and buy a cell phone jammer? That's not a thing the Best Buy sells. I need a military grade cell phone jammer to stop the 5G waves to, from getting into my house. And it's like, I. That's not a thing you can buy at the Best Buy. No. I had people who would come into GameStop and ask me for Mario video games in the PlayStation. I once had an old guy come in with a photoshopped copy of Mario Kart 8 on a PS4 box. And then he got mad at me and said, fuck you, I'm going to Walmart. And I was like, that doesn't exist, sir. That's not real. Doesn't exist. Not real. It's like, fuck you, I'm going to Walmart. They're going to tell you the same thing, sir. I'm sorry. I once worked a Black Friday shift at GameStop, and I had somebody come in at 3 a.m. I worked the 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift. I had an old guy come in at 3 a.m. and ask me if we sold a copy of Windows XP. GameStop. Like, there are people out there, and you encounter them when you work in retail or, or customer service, and especially out in the Midwest, and I they have left a permanent stain on my soul. Um... And I will never be able to escape that. And this is why I don't internalize a lot of uh, a lot of my time yeah. in retail. I just, I, yeah. I don't, I don't, I, I don't, yeah. I don't think about it. It's like, yeah, funny stories. Remember the, remember the woman, Brendan, that you sold a uh, Dyson and she was worried that her boyfriend was going to come and kill her in the middle of the night. So she was buying security cameras and she looked at you and she said, fuck it. I might die tonight. Show me a Dyson with a hundred percent sincerity. I, I, I swear to you, there is madness in the world that you may not understand that there is madness out there and it is it is oozing and you will not encounter it but if you were customer service inevitably if you have not had an encounter with like the madness if you have not looked into the eyes of a god long past dead inside of the shell of a mortal being then inevitably you will you will have a madness experience you will look into somebody's eyes and realize there's nothing there the lights are on but nobody's home Mr. Bryn Daniels, is there anybody at your lit house? I mean, the lights are on in somebody's home, but sometimes he's just taking a fat nap. I mean, every job is weird, but especially if you face, uh, if you're customer facing in any way, you're, you're gonna just, you're gonna see some things and hear some things from people that will blow your mind. Uh, that people really do just be like that. I got pushed into a glass door by a customer once during a Thanksgiving rush. I once had a customer yell and scream at me and slap my hand because, like, I was taking a Best Buy credit card payment from them and, like, he set his card down and pushed it towards me. Uh, and then I went to grab it, and he slapped my hand, and then, uh, the, like, yelled at me, called me a bunch of expletives. Uh, and I was like, that's, that's awesome, dude. Awesome. I, I really wanted somebody to be mad at. It was a really cool bit, dude. Really awesome bit. Really wanted to yell at somebody that day, and, and set it up so that he, in his mind, got, like, an okay to yell at me. That was, I think, the moment in retail, too, where I was like, I'm done. Like, I, nope. I'm, I'm leaving. I formulated my plan and then I got out. I formulated my plan to leave. You know how I quit GameStop is I gave my two weeks notice and then a day later I walked in, threw my keys in the ground and said, fuck you, I'm done. When I quit Best Buy, I printed off a, uh, a no week notice. Uh, cause you don't need to give a two weeks notice. You don't have to. That's a myth. You only have to give a two weeks notice if you want to be able to use that job as a reference and get like a good reference and like I didn't care. Uh, so I drafted, I went onto one of the Best Buy computers one Saturday. I uh, opened up Microsoft Word on the Best Buy computer. I walked into the manager's office at the end of my shift, and the note basically said, hey, this is Brendan. Um, as of the end of today, I quit, and I no longer work here. So good luck. And then I left. I turned my phone off for a whole week and didn't answer any calls. 
And I still haven't been back to that Best Buy since. Meanwhile, me starting a retail job in four days. I mean, listen, you're going to get a lot of fun, wacky experiences out of it. And I, I pray for you that you get a cool manager. I, I pray that you get a cool manager. It's always good to get a cool manager. Worst time I ever worked was when I was a grocery store cashier. I worked at Shopco for about a year, which is a local Midwestern chain. I worked there when I was a high schooler. Um, and I think the worst day for that was when kids at the high school that I went to came into the store and were skateboarding around. And I was like, I was like, dude, can you stop? I literally have engineering class with you tomorrow. Like, I know your name. He's like, fuck, Brendan works here. I can't do this shit anymore. He got genuinely upset that he couldn't skateboard around the store anymore because I worked there. Iowa, 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 Iowa. Um, and I was like, dude, I, I, I know who you are. I don't remember his name now, but like... I was like, dude, I know who you are. You're in my engineering class. Like, don't do this, please. I don't want to have to clean shit up from you, like, skateboarding around. Like, fine, dude, fine. Just wanted to goof a little bit, dude. Just wanted to goof a little bit. Help out those customers. When you're not doing anything else, you better be stalking. And if you're not stalking, you better be cleaning. You got time to lean, you got time to clean. Now remember, don't forget... You got time to lean. You got time to clean. Please, no. Please, I just want to chill for a minute. Could I chill? It's a slow day. It's a slow day at the retail day. It's a slow day at the retail store. Could I chill for like a minute? You got time to lean. You got time to clean. You ever see old people look so old that it's like they're from a Unity Asset Horror video game? Sometimes I'm afraid. Old people scare me. Not in like the I'm genuinely afraid of old people way, but in like the... You ever see an old person It's like they came out of a Unity asset for like an itch.io game and you're like, why? How did you get this way? If you got the dream, you got time to cream. Hopefully I don't look like that when I'm old. I'm really, I'm really praying for it. I'm hoping for it. I know one day I'm going to be, one day on this world I'm going to be old and I'm going to have to laugh at how old I am and people are going to laugh at me. I'm going to fall down the stairs and somebody's going to play a tuba while I walk really slowly with a walker. But I, I, I hope to God that I never look like a Unity store asset. I get irrationally angry over these manager lines and I only work retail for three weeks. You got time to lean, you got time to clean. Me, on the other hand, I'm gonna go in back and, uh, write some sketties. Brand new recipe, peanut butter eggs. We love it. A hundred dollars? You really wanted to do this, huh? teaching him a lesson. It's teaching him a lesson. He needs to know. He needs to fucking know. He needs to know. He needs to understand. If you want to pay for, if you want to pay for one item at a grocery store with a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> Can I go any faster? This is one penny per millisecond. He is, he is going to enjoy getting his change. He's gonna have to have big bags with dollar signs on them to be able to take this shit out. I wonder if we go outside when we give him the- when we give him the 90 dollars in pennies, I wonder if we go outside and like the- I wonder if the pennies are in the sky. I wonder, I'm curious about it. We're getting him his- we're- we're filling up his tank. He's getting his pennies. He's getting what he craves. He needs those pennies. He needs them. What is he gonna do without these pennies? He needs these pennies. He's gonna take all these copper. I'm gonna look at him. I'm gonna say, eat the pennies, gamer. Eat the pennies. He's gonna love eating these pennies. He's so happy. He's so excited about it. Look at him. We can look at him, but we're building ourselves a penny tower of Babel. He wanted $90 in change. I'll get him $90 in change. This dumb son of a bitch wanted to break 100 with a pair of with a little bit of egg. Sure. I don't give a shit if my shop isn't profitable today. I don't fucking care, dude. I'm building the tower of Abel. Sorry, the Tower of Abel, because Abe Lincoln is on the penny. Drowning him in pennies. Drown in it. He's gonna drown in it. There's your change. Let's check it out. Can I see it from outside? You can. You can. You can see it. It's taller than the buildings. It's popping out of the top of the building. You can see it. You can see it. Popping out of the top of the building. $90 in pennies. <laughs> I've heard a 10 penny tower, but just not, not, not like 9,000 penny tower. Anyway, there you go.
Oh my god, the customers. Holy shit, there is a there are too many customers in the store. Oh god, oh god. I, I'm getting a I'm getting a rush. Hi, do you have a rewards card with us? No? Great. I hope you have a great day and I hope you enjoy all your stuff. You have a great day now, sir. Hi, buying a couple of milk, buying some spaghetti. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Great, great. Love helping you out. Have a great day. Enjoy your stuff. Wow, bread and water. Awesome, cool, stable meal. Do you have a rewards card with us? No? Awesome. Have a great day. Ooh, sweet. A little bit of cereal, a little bit of egg, a little bit of tea, a little bit of coffee. I get that. I get that. I get that. $38. Here's your $2 in change, sir. Have a great day. Hi, how's it going? A little bit of spaghetti, a little bit of peanut butter, making peanut butter spaghetti. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Perfect. Exact change. Awesome. Great day. Have a great day, sir. Cool, 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 cool. What are we picking up here? Just got a little bit of change here. All right, here you go. Have a great day. Have a wonderful rest of your day. A little bit of milk for you, sir. I understand. I love helping people find their milk. Have a great day. Ooh, just a little bit of spaghetti, a little bit of pasta, a little bit of egg, a little bit of cheese. I get that. Absolutely. Have a great day, sir. Love helping out the community. Enjoy your day. Ooh, a little bit of cereal, a little bit of water, a little bit of peanut butter. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thirteen fifty. Ooh, one second. I'm having a little bit of a problem with the machine here. Don't worry about it. Took care of it. Have a great day. A little bit of cereal, a little bit of coffee, a little bit of cheese. Understandable. Have a great day. Ooh, just some cheese. Cool, cool, cool. Uh... You! You! Fool! Oh! More, 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 more. I want to leave the grocery store! I want to leave the grocery store! You can't leave. I need you to stay here, in the grocery store with me. Somebody has decided to pay for two packages of cheese with a hundred dollar bill. How bold of them. How incredibly bold. You wanted to do this? You want your chain? A third tower of pennies awaits the foul fool who sequesters away their large money at me. Do you think that this is a game? That you can just throw your large money out there in the world and I will just accept it and break it? I'm out of 20s. I'm out of 10s. I'm out of 5s. I'm out of 1s. No quarter. No nickel. No dime. No 50 cent piece, no Susan B. Anthony commemorative coin worth one dollar. No, you get the penny. Enjoy. Don't do it again. Or I'll do what I have to do. Whoa, pennies be upon ye. Whoa, pennies be upon ye. Help, please, let us out of the grocery store. No. Pennies be upon ye. It's dark in here. Will you at least turn the light on? I'm sorry, sir. I have to help this customer before I help any other customers, sir. I have to help this customer first, sir. It's very important that I get to the customer, sir. The customer is always right. If this customer was in line first, sir, I have to get him his change. He needs it. I won't stand for this. Oh, you're expecting me to just not help out the customer? Oh, you can wait. Wait in line. This is my store. If I have to wait, you have to wait. I love getting your change for you, sir. I love doing what I have to do for you. Oops, sorry. I overshot that a little bit. Here you are, sir. $94 in pennies. Awesome. What are we buying today? All right. Cool, cool, cool. Paid with card. Awesome choice. Have a great day, sir. Hey, a little bit of bread, a little bit of tea, a little bit of peanut butter. Awesome, pay with card. I see you're making the rational choice. I understand. A little bit of milk, a little bit of egg, a little bit of water. Awesome. They know now. Oh, they know now. They learned. They know better. Oh, they're all busting out the card. They don't want to get embarrassed like that guy. Dollar fifty. Awesome. They didn't want to try to break a hundred like that guy. Ooh wee. They learned. They learned their lesson. A little bit of milk. Okay, two fifty. Not not a single one of them wanted to be embarrassed like that guy. They're, they're like, oh, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy. Oh, God. W retail employees going to make fun of me. I don't want to be that guy. Oh, lie, Brendan. You were never normal. I was normal. I've been normal. I seem normal. I could be normal if I wanted to. How's your feet? How are your feet doing? I hear you just got back from the foot doctor. How are your feet doing? Did you see the weather outside? Ha <laughs> ha. Very tepid day we're having. A lot of moisture in the air. The humidity plays crazy with my hair. 
Hi, how are you? I'm normal. Hear you got a promotion at the big job factory today. I'm proud of you, and I hope that you get a lot more job money. Brendan, you know it would be really cool, actually? Kids are crazy about it these days. Ants, fill your store with bugs, Brendan. No, I'm not filling my store with bugs. I don't care what you say. I'm not filling the store with bugs. Brendan, the kids are going crazy for bugs, Brendan. Fill your store up with bugs. I'm not filling my store up with bugs. I'm not filling my store up with beetles, ants, reptiles. This is not a zoo. I'd buy your ants, Brendan. I'm not selling ants. I'm not an ant salesman. I'm not a bugman. I'm not Bug Daniel. Uh, Brendan, I'm sending vile potions your way to turn you into a bug. Please stop trying to turn me into a bug. I'm not falling for it again. It's not happening. I'm not going on a bug venture. You're never normal? No, nah, I'm normal all the time. I don't know what you're talking about. I like to read. Uh, sit by the fire. Wear a long robe. Walk around the house, uh, releasing a banshee wail whenever nobody else is around like a... Oh! When I'm alone in the home. That's a normal thing to do. Sometimes all you gotta do is release your inner, uh, what's the, what's the guy, Marley? Uh, Jacob Marley from, uh, Scrooge? Sometimes I just like to release a little Marley, you know? A little Marley energy. 100% normal. It's incredibly normal to walk around your home wearing a Jedi robe and nothing else with the windows fully open and just going, oh, oh, while you have a candle on a plate. I mean, realistically, if you're a human being in the United States of America and you don't have a candle on a plate, what are you even fucking doing? Right? Like, what are you even fucking- if you don't have a candle on a plate, what are you even fucking doing? What a waste. You could literally go and buy a candle, put it on a plate, and be so incredibly normal. Come on. Anybody could do it. Anybody could do it. Anybody could buy a candle with a, a plate on a candle. Candle on a plate. You can buy the combo. You can have them both. You can have best of both worlds. Is this slam poetry? No, slam poetry is what I call breaking your mom's back. Uh, with all the dubious back shots I do be doing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The demon came out. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <sighs> I don't know, I don't know why the demon decided to come out just then for just a quick minute, but uh, the demon had to come out. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The demon came out, I'm sorry. Realistically, when I die, I want my body to be embalmed and filled with animatronics and then put in my family home. That whenever you enter my family home, my animatronic, like, uh, uh, decomposing corpse points at you and says, Hi! Hey! I'll record over a hundred different voice lines that it'll say. It'll be like I'm still around.